I'd always secretly wanted to do a production of Company. I remember hearing the original cast album playing in our house when I was a kid and those amazing songs really stayed with me. But what is vital for me when I direct any show is that it needs to speak to the now. And Company was written in 1969. It's about a 35 year old man with a great job, a great apartment, lovely friends and he's not married at 35. But nobody really cares about that in 2022. Or at least it's not the same as it was in the 1970s. But if this male protagonist was a woman, I knew that could be different and would have something new to say to an audience in the theatre today. I had a real instinct that Bobby would make sense as a woman and that the choices and the concerns facing that character are concerns of many 35-year-old women now. What will she have to give up or compromise if she commits to a relationship, to having a family? Because relationships and families are a choice for women in 2022, when in the past it was just expected. But if she makes that choice, then can she and will she have it all or not? Men just don't have the same dilemma nowadays and that is the primary question of the piece. I actually think Bobby being a woman helps you care about the character more. Traditionally, Bobby is quite a hidden, mysterious person. You never really knew, know who they are. But if seen through a female lens, then her worry, her dilemma, her anxiety is a given. You just get it. Everybody knows a Bobby or everybody feels like they might be a Bobby. So many women I speak to feel like they've wrestled with the same choice as Bobby. It's like it's their story up there. Bobby is always looking at other people's relationships, trying to make sense of how other couples work. She's watching them, analysing them, thinking, that seems completely dysfunctional. Her friends are good friends, but possibly they feel like she's the fuel to keep their marriages working. It suits them that she is their single friend. They possibly even are enabling her to stay single. <laughs> She starts to glean all this through the piece and she ends with the question, but what do I want? I met Steve when I was in New York directing Curious Incident. He very kindly invited me over for dinner. So when I was thinking about doing the show, I wrote to him and said, what do you think? And I went back for dinner and we chatted and then that started a long conversation and a long collaboration. He always believed that what keeps theatre alive is the chance to do it differently with fresh perspectives. He was open to change and telling stories in different ways from generation to generation. That was something very special about him. He was a total collaborator. He didn't need to see a new production of Company out there. He didn't need to see a new version. He didn't need to lift a finger. He was nearly 90, but he got excited about the work. He got on board and he totally collaborated. We showed him the footage of a workshop that we'd done to see if it would work with the gender changes and he liked it, he liked it a lot. And then throughout the London production and then again on Broadway, he became part of the daily creative team and part of every discussion and he got really involved. I would wake up in the morning to receive a late night email from New York and I knew he'd been up perfecting a change of a lyric he thought could be better. Sondheim was really clear. We couldn't change George Firth's book. And it's a testament to George's writing that it totally stands the test of time. The dialogue is hysterically funny still. And in the mouths of these amazing actors, it feels absolutely of the now. He used to say to me all the time how much he wished George Firth could see this production. And that's what great writing can take. It can adapt, it can fit the times. We didn't agree on everything. We had many discussions. He wasn't sure about my idea of using the instrumental TikTok, for example, which shows mul multiple Bobbies seeing different versions of herself. He didn't think it should be in and I thought it should. And these conversations went on and on all throughout the uh, London previews. But eventually he rem I remember him saying to me, you are the one that feels most passionately about this. You should do it. It's your production. And actually, in the end, I know he got a real kick from how audiences responded so positively to that section of the show. It's sort of integral to who Bobby is. But other times he would surprise me. I thought he wouldn't like changing Amy to Jamie. 
for not getting married, which was quite a last minute switch. And I thought he'd think, mm, enough already. But when I told him about it, he emailed back and he said, yes, great, do it. And I know he adored watching that scene. It used to make him cry, he said it was extremely moving. Bringing the show to Broadway has been incredible. It's a love story for New York. Sondheim always said that every location and company is in Manhattan. Not even in the borough of New York, but in Manhattan. So Manhattan is very much part of the piece and very much part of the story. It's like a character in itself. It feels really special to have brought the story home. I hope it feels like the production is a love letter from me to a city that I adore. I'm not joking or being overly emotional when I say this, but I love this cast, all of them. The whole company of company. Katrina has this gorgeous New York wit and she's so relatable. She has sexiness in abundance and oh boy, can she hit the emotion in a way that feels truthful. She has the ability to take you on a real journey with Bobby. She's funny and smart and her being alive is absolutely the emotional gut punch I wanted it to be. It was a dream come true for me to work with Patti Lapone in London and now to see her live and breathe Joanne on a Broadway stage. And to see the way the city has embraced her and cheered her to the rooftops every night, it is a real joy. Patti Lapone is a genuine Broadway superstar. They don't make them like that anymore. She constantly tells me she's having the best time, which makes me even happier. How lucky are we all to have her? The whole company is so special. The understudies, the swings, the backstage crew, the orchestra, the stage managers, the dressers, and everyone who's in the building night after night are so special. I think we're particularly bonded because we've been through a lot as a company over these last two years, but we stuck together. We began Broadway rehearsals in January 2020 and we started previews in February 2020. And then we were shut down for 21 months because of the pandemic. But during the shutdown, we all stayed in touch and we all vowed that company would come back. Theatre has always been and will always be vital. But there were times during the pandemic when I genuinely feared that theatre as an art form might disappear, that its very being was in danger of extinction. Would we actually be able to come back together in a room with strangers and have that shared experience that only theatre can deliver? As humans, we need stories to make sense of our lives. And after so much isolation, loneliness, anxiety, uncertainty, we all needed this story about being back in good company, literally. There are two nights I'll never forget until my dying day. The very first preview, probably one of the most amazing moments of my career. There I was sitting in the audience, scribbling away, writing all these notes, trying to get the show better, 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 better. And I suddenly had to put my pen down because I was looking around me and I saw everybody getting up on their feet halfway through the show. And I was, astounded because it seemed to be going not just well but really 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 well you can never second guess an audience's reaction like that i don't think even more memorable was the first show back on broadway when we reopened after the pandemic closure and stephen sondheim was in the audience and he tried to sneak in quietly just before the show started but he got a huge spontaneous standing ovation and he really loved the show that night. I can still see him throwing his head back with joy and I can hear his distinctive laughter in my ears. And he joined us all after the show and we joked and hugged and celebrated being back together into the early hours 